From the Barbados Today Newsroom, this is your evening news update. Thanks for joining us. 36-year-old Kedar Holloway of Block 2D Sunnyside Court, Deacon's Farm St. Michael, was found dead today at Ashdeen Village, just a stone's throw away from his home. Police Public Relations Officer Acting Inspector Rodney Innes updated reporters at the scene on the investigations. We received a report earlier, around 12.05 p.m. today. Um, that information received revealed that a man was laying, his body was laying lifeless on the ground after he reportedly was in an altercation with another man. So far, we have confirmed that is the case. We have confirmed it's a male and believed to be in his 30s. The rebuilding and repair of thousands of houses damaged during the freak storm that occurred back in June and by Hurricane Elsa that occurred this month is underway in earnest. Housing Minister Dr. William Dugate provided an update as he toured the National Housing Corporation today. It's expected that government will be spearheading 500 rebuilds with 400 already assessed and another 1,400 homes on the waiting list still to be evaluated. Uh, it's not an easy task, but we meet every morning in our war room to be able to get a proper response, be it repairs, be it uh, total rebuilds, be it minor repairs, be it materials delivered. And uh, we've been about, I think, 46 people who've already had materials delivered and we continue to, to develop that. And I want to encourage people as much as possible. If you uh, have an artisan or a brother, or a uncle that can help you rebuild or do the repairs, and you just give us the repair list, we will, ass we will assess it and see that that repair list is appropriate and give us the opportunity to help you by virtue of the repairs. Because we, we anticipate that we'll have to do about 500 total rebuilds, which is a huge number. Uh, we've already assessed about 400 houses. We have another, I think, 1,400 to assess. Um, but we're going through those assessments uh, very carefully so that we know exactly which ones are rebuilds, which ones are, are, are minor repairs, which ones are major repairs. But the more that we can get that people give us the material list and they um, contract an artisan themselves, we can get those done a lot faster. Minister Dugate also revealed that the NHC will be standing up more workshops to accommodate the demand for services as he committed to getting people back into their homes in the shortest possible time. He says the goal is to complete a house in six to eight weeks. We've set up five uh, workshops and they're in various stages of setup. This is one of the National Housing Corporation workshop. So we were able to procure some saws and started to put together some benches. Once we have all the benches and so on in place, we'll actually start making the cuts uh, for the houses. So essentially what we do is we pre-cut all of the wood and then transport it to the location. And what we found is once we do this, we can get uh, the main structure of a house up in about, uh, well, some, some of them we get up in days, and then we can complete a house in like six to eight weeks. So we're trying our best to get all as many of these houses rebuilt because we recognize that there are lots of people who are totally without uh, proper accommodation. And this is obviously a major concern for us. With some small hotels struggling to keep their doors open as a result of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, Chairman of the Intimate Hotels of Barbados, Mohamed Patel, says some hotels must reinvent themselves. He told the annual general meeting of the Intimate Hotels of Barbados today that it should speed up the establishment of the proposed IHB cooperative, among other things. We need to start to collaborate on another level that we are not used to, meaning the creation of a cooperative structure. We should also try to create a sustainable energy platform through a solar farm and an individual solar energy at each property. And then the cooperative of bulk buying that would help us to save costs and become more efficient. What I find really difficult is that our ease of business Barbados is listed as 128 of 190 states in terms of ease of business. If we could collectively move to solve that, I think that would remove a lot of our problems and also increase you know, investment into our country. Treat us as true social partners. That's the rallying call from General Secretary of the Congress of Trade Unions and Staff Associations, Dennis De Pisa. He's not pleased with the conduct of social partnership meetings and insists that the umbrella trade union body deserves better treatment. The Congress is pressing its demand for the convening of the meeting of the subcommittee of the social partnership and publicly expresses its disappointment in the delay 
experienced in having its request for a meeting of the social partnership convened. The last meeting on record of the social partnership was convened in the month of April this year. And on, on that occasion, only the Barbados Private Sector Association, um, items which they put on the agenda were, and that were submitted by them, um, were considered. It is disconcerting that since then, the Congress has twice to written to the Minister of Labour and Social Partnership Commission, and obviously we copied this or correspondence to the um, Chairman of the Social Partnership and the Prime Minister, said no agenda items to be included on the whatever was the next meeting of the Social Partnership. These letters were dated the 17th and 26th of April, respectively. And the list of the items included the treatment of civil staff at the level of the Social Partnership, the hostility being exhibited against labour by private sector managers, the energising of the social of the of protocol um, seven, the government's proposal for contract employment of senior positions in the public service, and the regulation of the bank se sector. <clears throat> to date, we still have not had a meeting, and it's, it is disconcerting to the CDU staff that we are not being treated as we should be as a true social partner. DePisa also made a strong case for the resumption of subcommittee meetings of the social partnership where key issues are discussed. He appealed for the government to come to the table to discuss pressing issues, including reports of alleged price gouging and a sharp increase in the cost of living. And the Congress is calling for an immediate return to the status quo. As stipulated in at Section 11.2 of Protocol 6, the subcommittee of the social partnership may provide a form whereby through consultation and exchange of information there can be the betterment of the industrial relations climate. In other news this Thursday, Barbados records another day of double-digit COVID-19 positive cases. On Tuesday, the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory identified 17 new COVID-19 cases, 6 males and 11 females out of 898 tests. The number of people in isolation rose to 108. Since the first case was recorded in March 2020, Barbados has recorded 4,213 confirmed cases of COVID-19. The virus has claimed 48 lives. There's regional and international news after this short break. news, despite running low on vaccines, the Bahamian Health Minister Reno Wells is assuring his countrymen that more are coming. We pick up the story from Eyewitness News. Despite mounting concerns over a reported shortage of vaccines in country, Minister of Health Renard Wells assuring the public Tuesday that government is expecting more donations soon through COVAX. The concern rising after reports reached Eyewitness News that individuals were not able to book vaccination appointments beyond July 22nd. We are eagerly awaiting um AstraZeneca on July 26th. Now the current state of emergency is expected to end on August 13th and this is based on the fact that officials are expecting to reach herd immunity by that time but with only a few weeks shy of that date and only one eighth of the population vaccinated the minister was asked whether or not we could see changes to that date. He says however there are no current discussions about such. Uh, the governor general would have to call the House of Assembly back into session to be able to do that but as it stands now uh, we're moving forward as we would have uh, intimated in the past, which is the emergency orders ends on the 13th of August. On the international front, the European Union on Wednesday proposed an effective ban on the sale of new petrol and diesel cars as of 2030 as part of a broad package that will accelerate the switch to zero emission electric vehicles. More in this report from Reuters TV. The EU on Wednesday proposed an effective ban on the sale of new petrol and diesel cars as of 2035 as part of a broader package of measures on climate change. 
The European Commission proposed a 55% cut in CO2 emissions from cars by 2030 versus 2021 levels. And then a 100% cut by 2035, which would make it impossible to sell new fossil fuel-powered vehicles in the bloc. To boost EV sales, Brussels also proposed legislation that would require countries to install public charging points along major roads by 2025. The Commission proposals will need to be negotiated and approved by EU member states and the European Parliament, which could take around two years. Low emission vehicle sales surged in Europe last year, with one in every nine new cars sold, an electric or plug-in hybrid. Full electrification is still a long way off, though. Many carmakers have announced investments in electrification, partly in anticipation of tougher emissions targets from the EU. Last month, Volkswagen said it would stop selling cars with combustion engines in Europe by 2035, but later in China and the US as part of its shift to electric vehicles. And last week, Stellantis said it would invest more than $35 billion by 2025 on electrifying its lineup. That's news, but for the very latest, visit us at www.barbetastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.